just five minutes, let's learn about RPC node configurations. So over the past few weeks, I've done videos on subgraph configuration, subgraph building, as well as utilization of data APIs and stuff like that. But I have yet to go over the actual creation and configuration process in depth of an RPC node. These are fundamentally the things that connect your dApp to the blockchain. So then it's really important that the RPC node that you're using within your decentralized application is perfect for your specific use case. So this is why today we're gonna go over the different configurations possible within an RPC node, what they all mean, as well as provide some examples for the practical differences between some of these configurations. So let's get started. Here, I'm gonna be deploying an Ethereum node on Chainstack specifically, but this information applies virtually across the board. So I've opened up my Chainstack console here, I'm logged into a test account, and I've created a project called Test Project. I'll open that up, and in here, I can join a network. I'll click on Get Started. Now I'll want to choose a protocol. Again, a lot of this information I'll be going over is applicable to many of these, especially the EVM chains on here. But in this case, I'm going to be focusing on Ethereum, and specifically the Ethereum mainnet. So on here, I will select Ethereum. And now we can choose whether we want to deploy on mainnet, Sepolia, Goerli, etc. In this case, I will choose the Ethereum mainnet and click on Next. So now we get to a pretty interesting part of the configuration process. To start, we can choose between two options, either standard or advanced. Standard will choose a few configuration options for you, which in this case means that it'll deploy a globally load balanced elastic full node on Ethereum. We'll talk more about this later, but there's two different types of nodes on Chainstack. There's either global nodes or regional nodes. Global nodes are, as the name suggests, load balanced globally, which means that Regardless of the location, when you make a request to this node, it'll push it to a server that's closest to you, reducing any major variation in latency and increasing stability and reliability in the process. So if I stuck with standard here, it would automatically deploy a globally load balanced elastic full node. But as I'm going through these different options, I will choose advanced so that we can do some customization. So to start, we have two major options. These will be some of the biggest impacts to our node itself. We have Elastic versus Dedicated and Full versus Archive. Let's start with Elastic versus Dedicated. In this case, Elastic nodes will be what most people deploy. Elastic nodes are reliable, fast, affordable, and easy to launch. Dedicated nodes, on the other hand, are entire nodes that are being deployed from 0 to 100 exclusively for your project. So rather than being an Elastic node that is a part of a larger whole, a Dedicated node is exclusively deployed for you, with its compute resources not being shared with anybody else. Dedicated nodes typically offer additional services and options over Elastic nodes, but they're more expensive, they take longer to deploy, etc. So if you really value the highest amount of customization possible, then you might want to consider a Dedicated node. Otherwise, Elastic Nodes are great for 99% of use cases. They're fast, reliable, and very easy to deploy. So now moving on to full versus archive. So this is another big one. So full nodes, while they contain full blockchain data, only contain a certain amount of state data up to a specific point in history. Archival nodes, on the other hand, contain the entire history of the blockchain. So I've created this short script here. Basically what this does is number one defines two different RPC endpoints. One of them is archival, and one of them is non-archival, or a full node. It then defines an address, defines a block number, and then it tests each node's ability to get the balance of this address from that point in time. So we're basically saying, what was the balance of Vitalik.eth back at block 5 million? So as you can see with the archival node, it says that the balance at block 5 million was this large number. This is in way, so. And then for the non-archival node, as you can see, of course, we get an error because it actually physically doesn't contain this data in that node. So if you need that type of data availability, then an archive node is perfect for you. Otherwise, a full node will be more than enough. So now we have two additional options. These additional options will differ by the network that you're deploying to. In this case, we have warp transactions and debug and trace APIs. Warp transactions propagate your transaction through the high-speed blocks route relay network. This essentially means that whenever you send a raw transaction, eth underscore send raw transaction in your code, it'll go through the high-speed transaction relay network and be available for validators to pick up much faster than a traditional transaction. We also, of course, have the debug and trace APIs. So this enables you to call things like debug trace call, debug trace transaction, etc. We can also choose here between chain stack hosting and private hosting. In most cases, you can use chain stack hosting, but private hosting is for the case in which you want to deploy to self-managed infrastructure. But in this case, we'll stick with chain stack, which will take us to the location selection menu. So now we can choose what region we're deploying to. So of course, the number one option is if you want to deploy this to the global network. In most cases, global nodes will be great. They'll be fast and very reliable across a variety of locations. Although if you want even lower latency, and you're specifically sending requests from a server that's close to a regional location, then you can scroll down and choose a cloud provider that you want to deploy to. So you can choose things like North Virginia and AWS, 
Singapore on Google Cloud, London on Microsoft Azure, Chain Set Cloud for some different protocols like Solana, for example, Virtuoso for even more locations. In this case, I'm going to choose a global node. And now, of course, you can also choose the node name. You want to keep it node one, you want to change it. I'm going to keep it node one. So now we can see everything that we've chosen. We can see that it'll be 3 million request units included. And of course, all of the configuration options that we just chose. So let's click join network. So now instantaneously, the node has deployed. If you choose a regional node, it might take a few minutes, but because we chose a global node, it's already deployed. And here we have a dashboard that tells us the percentage of successful requests, the total number of requests in the past 24 hours, the total number of invalid requests, Additionally, down here, we have some different metrics. And then, of course, down here, we have all of the endpoints. So we have the HTTPS execution client endpoint. We have the WebSocket version, the consensus client, and so on. If you'd like to learn more about Chainstack Elastic nodes, you can do so with the link below this video. If you'd like to watch more bite-sized building videos, you can also do so through the link below.